Hello everybody, this is Joseph, and you're watching Die Hard Orchids. Today, I'm going to show you how to care for Phalaenopsis. As you can see here, I've got four different types of uh, life stages that they can go through. And I'm going to tell you about each one, the best temperature to keep them in, and here we go. So let's start with this one. So as you can see here, this orchid has what's called a flower spike. And this is where the flowers come from, obviously. So it really depends on when it has a flower spike. Um, you can pretty much have them any time throughout the year, as long as the conditions are great and the orchid is happy and healthy. Um, this is what the substrates of this one is here. Uh, this one is just planted in sphagnum moss. You can do just sphagnum moss. Uh, I like to use a mix of sphagnum moss as a thing to hold in a little bit of moisture, just, just enough around the roots and all that uh, to keep moisture in. You don't have to do that. I personally like to do that. And then I like to surround that with orchid bark. Orchid bark retains water. If you do it properly, it retains some water. It doesn't have the huge water logging effect that sphagnum moss does. So this orchid here has quite a few leaves on it. And most people say that Phalaenopsis orchids have two to three leaves. I think it really depends. Uh, you can find anywhere, uh, I've, I've seen orchids that have had up to 10 leaves. Um, let's see here. Oh, another thing about this flower spike is when it dies off completely, I wouldn't recommend cutting it until it dries out because I've seen it where these little nodules at the base of the stem here, or even like right here, they can actually sprout more stems and more flower spikes and you'll have more flowers. So this is one that is in bloom and it gives you an example of what the flowers look like. Phalaenopsis orchids have very different looking flowers from each plant, even from the same species. So you really have to look at what you're getting uh, because they can be different types, they can be different flower shapes, different anything. So another thing is the one previously had seven leaves on it. This one here has four. So how I was saying earlier that it really depends on how many leaves there are this gives you a good example. Again, this one is in sphagnum moss. Uh, at some point it will have to be replanted into a mix of sphagnum moss and uh, bark chips. So Phalaenopsis orchids don't have any scents. If you're going for a scented orchid, the best in my opinion would be Zygopetalum. Uh, they've got a very, very fragrant scent to them, almost like perfume, but it really depends what type of day, too. Uh, the, the scent of it really changes throughout the day. So it'll be very strong in the morning, and it'll be very subtle at night. But that's a topic for a different video. So they don't have any scents. And I like to keep these orchids at a temperature of around 70 degrees. So where I live here in Southern California, it really doesn't change. I think the lowest it gets is maybe 55, 50s. Uh, it can get anywhere up to 82 uh, and sometimes even 90. Occasionally it can get up to 100, uh, but Typically around 70, 75 degrees is ideal temperature for these orchids. They don't like a lot of humidity. You can provide them with some humidity, but it's not a requirement. All right.
right? And now we have a big one here. This one doesn't have the flower spike. This one is one that I got a long time, a while ago, actually in Idaho, when I lived up in Idaho. So this one is planted in orchid bark. This is a good uh, long-term solution. Uh, if you're consistent with watering it though, it can become waterlogged. So every time you water it, you really have to make sure that you drain out all of the water before you put it back in the pot, especially if the pot has no opening in the bottom for a drainage hole. So that brings me to the next dilemma, or the next, I should say, problem. There's a lot of different things about how you should water Phalaenopsis orchids. I don't like to use ice cubes because it has a tendency to burn the roots and the leaves. But what you can do is you can take, if you're really finicky about measurements, you can take a ounce cup and measure out two ounces, sometimes three ounces if it needs it, and pour that in there. What I actually do is I actually take the lazy man's approach to watering them. I just, every week, I actually do it every Wednesday, I water them, I let the water drain out completely, and I put it back in the pot with some stones in the bottom of it. This one I don't have stones because I literally don't have stones. Otherwise I would do that. But there's still excess water in the bottom, all the way at the bottom here, and if you leave that water in there, it'll cause the roots to rot eventually, and it won't be good for the plant. So any t kind of water that's left over is a good idea to drain out. Even if you have drained out all the rest of it, I'd still recommend putting a couple of stones in the bottom of it to keep it elevated. Okay, and here's this one. This is a different species of Phalaenopsis. Uh, I'd like to actually take a minute to show you the different types of leaves that they can have. So these ones are more oval shaped. This one here is more elongated. This one is kind of in between actually, as you can see there. And these ones are kind of long and flat. So depending on the species of Phalaenopsis you get, leaf, leaf size and shape doesn't really make a difference about care. It just pretty much says the same thing about all of them. So the flower spike on this one is very small here. And this one still has a lot of growing to do. Typically, they don't produce flower spikes, at least from what I've heard and seen, at about two years. So the ones at the store have got some kind of growth hormone paste that they put on the plant in a certain area uh, to encourage flower spikes. I don't like to do that because it's not it's not natural, and I'm all about trying to keep it as natural as, as possible. Some people do that, some people don't do that, but my personal preference is not doing that. I've also heard too that apparently uh, you can actually grow keikis from the stem of the plant. I've never done it. I actually have one where it grows a keiki out of the middle of the stem here uh, and the reason why they do that is because the original parent plant has been put through some kind of stress or some kind of uh, horrible conditions or something like that where it starts to die and growing the keiki, keiki is Hawaiian for small plants, when it grows that it is its way of fighting back. 
I've had one where it goes all the way down. All it, it had a flower spike like this, actually. Never bloomed. All of a sudden, the flower started dying all the way down the stem. The stem died finally. I had to cut that off. And then the leaves started to die one by one. They just all fell off. And then it was just a pile of sphagnum moss and roots. And then a few days later, I start seeing a keiki at the bottom of one of the plants and it came back. So that's a different story too. Uh, I will be talking a little bit more about keikis in another video, so make sure to check that out. All right, and there's your simple how-to video on how to take care of Phalaenopsis.